uh, your reporting overnight and again today on what you found when you when you got to the scene. Uh, having watched the fireworks from a small village in the foothills above Nice and then hearing of the devastation and the carnage and this terror just hours later, Andrea, I got here about 2 in the morning and people were still walking around in shock. The streets were deserted. They were hundreds of police officers still on the streets at that time and people just uh, sitting in a hotel lobby uh, where the hotel had brought blankets and, and put them around these folks, not because they were injured, just because they just were staring off into space and needed a quiet place to collect their thoughts. And now the thousands who have come out uh, on such a gorgeous day, but an air of tragedy and darkness hanging over it all. And now we know, Andrea, that there are two victims from Texas. They are Sean and Brody Copeland. Uh, they are from the Austin area, a community called Lakeway. And we heard from a friend of theirs just a short time ago. Here's what he had to say. Sean had that, uh, always had a smile on his face. He had a, a bubbly personality, always upbeat. It's a tragedy. Uh, what's going on in our world today is uh, unbelievable. And for it to hit as close as it did last week in Dallas, Fort Worth, and then this week to hit Prosper, uh, it's devastating. And that was Jason Dixon, a friend of the family. He also told us off camera that this family had actually been on a kind of a, a three hop vacation in Europe and they had just come from running with the Bulls. And uh, the other folks from the United States we've talked to have probably been like me. I've been getting text messages and uh, emails and calls all day from friends who know that we are here and that we come here every July and, and are we safe? And it's. Um, you know, it's just after Orlando, and uh, I miss Dallas, but now here, it's just almost too much. You know, there's just one after another in terms of the coverage lately. Uh, we're continuing to follow it from here. What you see behind me is still an active crime scene investigation. They just, in the last 90 minutes, uh, moved the vehicle. It's still in the area, but it's not in its original place, and there is uh, a lot of investigation going on behind me. Andrea, back to you. Janet Chamley, and thank you so very much. And Eamon Moadine, in New York. Uh, what do we know? Because there's been no claim of responsibility. Uh, people are supposing ISIS because of what else has happened in France in the, in the last two years alone. And because Nice is a, a, a departure point for foreign fighters going to Syria for training and for returning. Yeah, Andrew, we're learning more about uh, this attacker. And in fact, we've been able to confirm these images. This is the first time we're putting on air the photo of this attacker that NBC News has confirmed. We know that the suspect, or the attacker, I should say, the, kill, the dead attacker now, is known as Mohammed al Hawaj Buhalal, a man of Tunisian descent. We believe that he is uh, carrying a French residency status, which is the equivalent, if you will, of a green card or permanent residency within France. But what we've learned about this individual just in the last couple of hours, he is a 31-year-old, and according to the French prosecutors, we are hearing there from Bill Neely, no known ties uh, to foreign terrorist organizations that would have put him on the radar of French and European intelligence officials. That is according to the French prosecutor who gave a briefing a short while ago. But we've also learned that given his Tunisian uh, heritage, his name has been given to Tunisian security officials uh, for them to cross-reference with any databases and, in, and intelligence information they have. So far, nothing has come up. They are interviewing his family in Tunisia. According to a senior Tunisian source, they believe uh, that he has uh, traveled to France or he traveled to France in 2005 obtained his residency through marriage. That, again, is according to a Tunisian official who is working on this case from his end of the investigation. But as you mentioned, and as Bill Neely there was also reporting, uh, the attacker's background, his profile, is slowly coming into light. Some of this based on reporting that NBC has not yet independently uh, verified that he was uh, a, a father previously divorced. Uh, some of his neighbors have been quoted in both uh, local French media saying that uh, he was not known to be a religious man, that he had uh, financial problems uh, and was not known to uh, belong to any particular radical group. And you brought up the question, is there any claim of responsibility? So far, there has not been a credible claim of responsibility. What we have seen, uh, a lot of ISIS fanboys, if you will, celebrating this and, and encouraging this, but no credible 
claim of uh, responsibility from either ISIS or perhaps other groups capable of carrying out similar attacks on European soil like uh, Al Qaeda and, and what happened. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.